Tabitha, thank you so much for joining us today. I couldn't be more thrilled to talk about what you're doing off the side of your desk. So many women have aspirations to contribute in different ways, but oftentimes we get so busy in our day job and with our children or our nieces and nephew or the things we commit to in our community that days go by and we don't really jump into the passion and excitement that drives us. So tell us a little bit about what you're doing off the side of your desk. So quite naturally, we've discussed that I'm a tax accountant in the daytime, but when I'm not being a tax accountant, I love to serve my community and um, try to support as many women as possible, whether that's through my tribe or at church. If you have aspirations, don't shy back. Just practice and move forward. That's all it takes. And so I want to help women understand that even when we're going through difficult times, we don't have to go sit in a corner somewhere. We don't have to cry by ourselves. Um, If you don't have friends that you can cry with, then you need to search that out, whether that's in a church setting or uh, going on meetup.com and seeing what groups are in your local community. You know, put yourself out there and I guarantee you, your life will change in a positive way because you're not alone. There are other women who are waiting on you. And that's what I felt in 2012, really, that there is someone waiting on me to show up. Yes, that is beautiful. And I feel like women are tasked with so many things, especially now with everything going on this year, it seems like women are straddling so many different responsibilities. So how did you decide to kick off this series? Because as soon as you told me about it, I'm like, yes, yes. And yes, let's just like, let's shout this from the rooftop. So tell me about your process to kick. Well, first let's introduce the series that you're going to host. And then uh, tell us a little bit about your decision process to make this so. So the the series is called the Resilient Woman Series, and this will be the wife edition. So if you're a wife or you're engaged, this is going to be the perfect series for you to come in and get a little sneak peek to women who have either have had challenges in their their life, in their marriage, in their um, career setting, or if they have a business, um, that's what you're going to see. You're going to have a peek into their testimonies their tips and tricks and guidance, because we all need guidance. We don't have to shy back and say we don't need help. I think that's the first thing about being resilient is knowing when we need help and taking that first step forward to admit, to accept that we cannot do all things by ourselves. It takes a community. It takes a tribe. And for us not to be afraid to recognize that. And so the thought process around the series came, really it's been, this, this concept has been on my heart for three years, but it really came to fruition back in March when schools shut down and it was just really frustrating. And so I said, you know, I can't be the only one. And I thought back to a time when I felt like I wasn't enough to be a tax accountant. I wasn't enough to be a mom. I wasn't enough to be a wife. And I had to think back, well, how did I get through those situations? I'm a twice married. I've been divorced before. So how is that affecting the situation? I have a daughter who made her decision in March that she didn't want to live by our rules anymore. That stress, all during the beginning of the pandemic, of my daughter moving out, kids being home all day, husband not home at all until he gets off, you know, his 10-hour shift, and still expects me to be the woman that he married. And so I just knew I couldn't be the only one going through these frustrations. I appreciate where you're going with this in so many ways, because I do feel that the only, you know, so many people are doing Zoom calls, so many people are still participating. And most people I talk to are even working harder now than they were even eight months ago. And so having time to carve out each day for women, that's really just about them. It's about filling their bucket. It's about relatable conversation is so refreshing, refreshing. So you decided you were going to have this series. 
the resilientwomanseries.com if people want to save their seat. Uh, and you're going to bring people together to share all the things that you're talking about and more. And so what was the compelling event in your life that you're like, I'm going to do this? Like, this is it. I'm going to do it. So I was a part of a 21 day challenge myself mm. and I would have never done this in this manner. It would have never been 20 plus speakers. I probably would have done it three days. Right. And right. like, Hey, got to three days. And so what's the next? Yeah. And what I realized is if I can do a 21 day challenge that better my mind to know that I can put myself out there, mm -hmm. then I know that other women can do the same thing. Yeah. Especially when there's experts that have proven um, science or proven, you know, testimonials from clients that what they teach and their whole methods work, then uh -huh. why not give that out as a gift? Yes. I love that. I love that. And I often see this when people go through things that are so impactful, they want to share it with their friends and their friends' friends. So how do women know that, like, what what should, if women are thinking X, they know this is something they should carve out time for. So what what is what is the right type of woman to attend? Because this is the wife edition. Yep. And it's for anyone that's engaged. So if you're looking to get married, you can kind of peek in and see what it may look like. Like, take the woman's story and set yourself up to say, hey, this could happen to me, whether it's at work, whether it's taking your kids to the playground, whatever that atmosphere looks like, mm -hmm. you could be the positive influence. That's what I've discovered. I can influence my husband. I can influence my kids. I can influence my friends. Anyone that comes into contact with me, I'm going to give them a word of encouragement. That might look like a prayer. Um, just a word of, hey, you you got this. I know your potential. Why are you sitting on your gift? That is what you're going to get from me. And I feel like we, as, as women, we need to be more comfortable with getting in the uncomfortable. Yeah, it starts with you. I mean, obviously, I've been married uh, 18 years now, and we have been through our ups and downs, too. And, and I have to tell you, I have, feel like you know, your biggest lessons come through the people that are closest to you. Yes. And it really is, you have to start with yourself first. And so if you're blaming or you're saying it's not me or they're all the problem, you really do need to slow down and say, what is aggravating me? Why do I not feel good about myself? What is really getting my goat? And, or what do I want to be doing that I'm not doing? Because sometimes, you know, I even see in so many relationships like, you, it is a mirror of how you're feeling about yourself. So if somebody else gets you aggravated because they're taking the time to do something, it's usually because you're not taking the time to do it. And I think for many of us, they don't tell us how to be good wives or how to be good partners. And it's not about doing for others. It's about doing for yourself so that you can appreciate others. I started to read the book that you referred to me, The Soul of Money. So I've started it. And then I'm also reading a book, um, Five to Thrive, and it's all about knowing if your core needs are being met, and if they're not, what do you do about it? Not what your husband do about it, what not what your kids or your boss, it's what do you do about it? Yeah. Because like we've, we've, all, we've been saying, we're the influence. So yeah. we have to figure out what's not being met in our lives, and knowing that there is an ultimate source that can meet every need. And then the everything else is just extra. Yeah. It takes a long time. And I feel like some of that comes with age. Some of it comes with what you've been brought up with. And some of it comes with how you spend your time. And so, you know, what do you hope women are going to get from this summit? So the goal of the summit is to have a resource for women that need more confidence, um, for women to see that they can live with clarity, and resilience, like we, when we hear the word resilient, we may think of Wonder Woman, and that is not what I think of. I think of, you know, a Rosa Parks. I think of um, Jamie Lee Curtis, like she's just awesome to me. I think of women like Oprah, you know, the women who really stepped out and said, this is what I want my life to look like, whatever that is, this is what I want. Mm -hmm. And my spouse 
if he doesn't understand it, it's my job to get him to understand it. You know, when I quit my job and my husband's like, we've always been a two income household. Like, what are you doing? And I said, but you forget, babe, when we bought our house, when we buy our cars, we've always done it in accordance with one income. So getting him on board, it took two years. I came up with the idea to quit my job two years before I actually quit. Mm -hmm. I did not just up and quit. So we have to get our spouses on board with us. And it's the communication and the language that we use. And it's also the drive we have to satisfy what we say we're going to do. Yeah. And there's a lot of responsibility for us as women. There's a lot of women that have done a lot of things for us to for our voices to be heard, for us to be in the workplace, for us to have a choice. And there's so many avenues of our lives that, you know, making time to empower not only the women of where we're at, but the women behind us and honor the women before us, I find too, is just so gratifying and so rewarding and and honestly necessary. We can't, we can't take without giving back. And so if women are listening to this and say, yes, I need this, how do I sign up? Where should they go to reserve a virtual seat? So they would go to the resilientwomanseries.com and it's simple. All you put in is your name, your email address, and then you will get an email telling you the next details for the next steps for you to wait until August 24th for these interviews to come out. And they're going to be a gift to your life because there's going to be some heart spoken stories of women who showed up in times of challenges. Yeah, that inner strength is so important and starting small with small things and then growing to big things. I mean, what I always tell women is you don't want to be running out of, you know, if I'm having a talk with them, you don't want to run out and just tell everyone around you like, hey, I'm going in a different direction. Thanks so much. See you later. You want to start with small steps. And a lot of it is just carving out time for yourself. And this is a great way to do it. Sign up to listen to a video each day. Uh, to give you the inner strength and then start to build people around you that are going to give you not only the confidence, but the support. Because as you and I know, it's not easy to cross the chasm. And oftentimes you have to practice several times before you can actually make your leap. And these types of gatherings can give you that energy and momentum to do so. And that's even if you're just meeting with one other person, Mm -hmm. whether that's in person or through a Zoom call, it's just meeting yeah, and just getting to know that person one-on-one and freeing yourself up to not feel judged. No yeah. one wants to be judged, especially during this time. And so have a judgment-free, you know, zone to where people can just show up and be who they are. And we, we get to know how we are alike versus how we're different. I love that. I did an inventory for my first book about muting the negative, and I could not believe how many times in my head I would say something that was not positive. And most of it had to do about me. And so really starting with yourself and being kind to yourself, like you're doing the best you can under the circumstances. Like you need to just appreciate where you're at and what you have accomplished and not focus so much on what needs to get done. Right. So Any woman that is, you know, 25 to 55, married, engaged, this would be a great opportunity for you to look inside, you know, the lens of some resilient women and, you know, just take to heart that these series, these interviews are going to be raw, real, and honest. And so there's going to be topics, you know, from finances to nutrition and wellness, to faith, to parenting, co-parenting. Um, just all things that we deal with all throughout the year, you know, what factors that affect us externally, like we said, who are we listening to? Who are we listening to and that speak into our lives that either limits us or pushes us? And so be careful about your cheerleaders. So they're going to listen to what you say and they're going to cheer you on that way. Unless a special woman come along and say, someone could be doing this, but it doesn't have to be you. I love it. I love it. Tabitha, I'm sure women listening are already inspired. I'm so thrilled our paths have crossed. And I 
wish you the best of luck with this. I know I'm going to be participating and watching, and I hope many of the women that you get a glimpse of this, if this crosses your path, you're likely uh, encouraged to listen to it too. And I just want to thank you for joining us and sharing your passion project off the side of your desk. Thank you, JJ.